Hello, so today I will be talking about how COVID gave me POTS. Well, not how COVID gave me POTS, but like the story of me getting COVID to all of my long-term symptoms to then getting diagnosed with POTS. So a little timeline. I had COVID 10 months ago from when this video is being filmed. I had COVID, I tested positive on September 11th. And I only remember that because I was like, wow, what a really shitty day to test positive for COVID. But I tested positive September 11th, 2020. It is now June and still suffering. I made a whole other video about this on my channel, but I cried in it and I was like, mm, that's embarrassing. And I had to delete it. Um, Now I've been diagnosed with POTS so I figured this is a great time to remake that video to I don't know I guess just make aware to everybody who doubted that COVID was real or dangerous or that the people who subscribed to if you're young COVID won't affect you negatively. I think a lot of people misconstrue if you're young you won't get hospitalized as you won't have long-term symptoms when that's just not true. So when I tested positive for COVID, I had a very low fever. It was, I don't know what the, I forget what the exact number was, but it was the exact number that marks if you have a fever or not. I think it was like 100.3. And I had a slight scratchy throat and I just felt very brain foggy the whole time. At first, I just thought it was the bad air quality that was causing like my scratchy throat. And I was on my period the first two days that my symptoms started. So I was taking Advil, so I didn't have a fever. So I felt normal aside from the slight scratchy throat, which I had had before from the mountains in Arizona being on fire and causing bad air quality and stuff like that. And then the my period started getting better. So I didn't take Advil one day and that's when I got the fever. And I was like, oh crap, what if I have COVID? Now, mind you, I did everything that I could right in terms of COVID, I did not go to parties. I didn't hang out in large crowds. I had two friends at the time that I would hang out with and I would see one of them maybe once a week, once every two weeks. I only went to the grocery store and for two walks a day outside. I didn't even go to a gym. I really don't know how I got COVID and how my friends who have been going to Greek life parties this entire time since since the school year started when COVID was still running rampant, how they haven't gotten COVID, but I got COVID. It's not necessarily that people deserve COVID, but like some people deserved COVID, if you know what I mean. Like if you're going to a frat party or like your sorority parties, you kind of deserve to get COVID, sorry. But I lived alone. I know I got it from somebody in the elevator at my apartment complex or in the lobby, cause can't just stay in your apartment all day. You have to get your mail sometimes. You have to go for walks so you're not just sitting on your ass all day. People have said to me, people online who um, said that like COVID closures are dumb because it's just the flu. I'll comment back, I had the flu and it didn't give me long-term symptoms and they'll say, you shouldn't have gone out. I didn't go out. Going for walks is not going out. Going to the grocery store is not going out. My grandmother got COVID in a nursing home. Should she have not gone out? It's just so ignorant and fucking stupid. <laughs> About like a month after having COVID, I was FaceTiming with one of my friends and he was like, COVID's not real. It's all gonna go away after the election. And I was like, bro, I just had COVID. It's kind of real. And guess what didn't go away after the election? Yeah. Um besides the point. So I did pretty much everything I could to not get COVID. I had to travel home in the summer for a month because my lease ended a month before my new lease at another place started. So I kind of like had to go home. I didn't have anywhere to go. Like I wasn't traveling for fun. I originally wasn't going to go until I realized that my leases were so far apart. But yeah, I got COVID and about, it was the 10th day after I tested positive because they say you can leave on the 10th day. I was so excited to finally go for my walks again, my daily walks, because I was cooped up in my studio apartment doing nothing. So I was excited to go for my walks again and to tan again. Mind you, I would sit in the sun in Arizona for hours and I'd be fine. 
So I'd go outside and I tanned for an hour. And then I started feeling just not right. Like I was still brain foggy from COVID. Fast forward, that brain fog did not really clear for months, but I walk back to my apartment complex and I'm going up in the elevator and all of a sudden I like this heat wave took over my body. And as soon as I stepped out of the elevator, when it finally opened on my floor, I just collapsed to the ground. And the maintenance guy that was like walking onto my floor from the elevator with me was like, oh shit. And I'm just on the floor like, oh my God, I have no idea what's happening. So he tries to walk me back to my apartment. Every few steps, my legs will just stop working. And I just, my vision turns white and I just faint. Um, so I'm repeatedly fainting, walking back to my apartment. I get to my door, I unlock it start pushing the door open and then I faint again into my door and wake up again on the floor as like a little door wedge in between my fucking door and bless this maintenance guy's heart he like walked into my apartment got my fan and like set it up facing me on the couch and he was like are you okay like like he was like concerned and I was like oh my god I'm embarrassed like this is embarrassing I just fainted multiple times that's embarrassing and then he came back a half hour later and to check on me and make sure I was okay. But originally I thought I'd fainted because I hadn't eaten, but I had eaten, I'd eaten oatmeal that day. And now looking back, I definitely didn't faint because I hadn't eaten. Well, I don't know, I can't say that, but I just thought it was because I hadn't eaten, but I don't have a history of fainting from not eating. I have fainted one other time in my life and that was from gallbladder pain because it was so painful. Back in my like restrictive days, I used to not eat for days and I would be fine. That fainting episode was when all of my symptoms started to surface and come to the light. About a month after having COVID, it was October 4th, my friend came to visit me and I'm a little paranoid from fainting, but I hadn't really registered that it was a COVID thing. Um, I was still a little brain foggy from COVID, but other than that, I felt fine not really fine but you get my point i wasn't paranoid that this was a long-term covid thing my friend comes to visit we we stepped outside for maybe five minutes when it was like 110 degrees and then i just realized that my body was not tolerating the heat and i don't know how else to describe heat intolerance to people like you know it when you have it it's not like oh i feel a little hot it feels a little toasty it's like your limbs and your body just feels wrong you get this like doom feeling in your body because it's too hot like your limbs will kind of feel like 10 percent numb my heart would start palpitating it still does that if it's too hot but yeah this day all of the symptoms just like all at once i was getting shortness of breath heart palpitations um, the heat sensitivity and just dizziness, extreme, extreme nausea. When I say heart palpitations, I thought I was having a heart attack. Like we were, she was driving because I didn't feel well. I'm in the passenger seat and my heart, I could, you should not be able to feel your heart. I could feel my heart. And like, let's just say this is a normal heartbeat. My heart was doing this. Like it was like freaking out in my chest. Um, and I didn't know what it, like a palpitation really was. I didn't know that's what it was. And I'm like, dude, I'm having a heart attack. Like you need to call 911. Like my heart's going to stop beating. And like she called 911 and the EMT that showed up was like, it's anxiety. And I was like, mm. so then after that, she took me to urgent care. They retested me for COVID, no longer had COVID. They thought I might be having a blood clot in my lung, a pulmonary embolism because of the shortness of breath. Send me to the ER, I get a CAT scan on my lungs. Nothing's wrong, all my blood works fine. Eventually my symptoms went away and I felt fine. And then I was discharged with no answers. After that episode was when I realized this is a COVID thing. I don't think it's a coincidence that this just happened after covid fast forward to november this piece has nothing to do with pots but it has to do with my long-term covid i had an ovarian cyst rupture in november and after that ruptured i started having even till now like progressively over the next few months i started getting excruciatingly painful periods i started nearly like my my 
now that I look back, my POT symptoms that I was having back then before I knew it was POT symptoms would get worse on my period. My period was excruciatingly painful to the point where I was like on the verge of blacking out. I like literally went to the ER for period cramps because I thought I was like having another ovarian cyst or something. And they're like, no, you're fine. Come to find out now, my ovarian cyst was most likely also caused by COVID. And I learned that when I switched to a new practice, new family practice about a month ago, the PA that I saw was like, oh yeah, no, there's research showing that COVID fucks with your estrogen levels and that is what causes ovarian cysts. And with, with, the, after the, with the post ovarian cyst stuff, I started having trouble like peeing fully, like fully emptying my bladder and having pain while peeing. Mind you, I have been tested for like, you can watch my birth control videos. I go more into depth with everything, but I've been tested for like UTIs and yeast and like STDs and everything. There's nothing ever wrong with me. I was just having this pain. And she also has had a long-term COVID patient who also has trouble with peeing and the same symptoms as I do. So COVID not only like fucked up, COVID not only gave me POTS, but it's also probably the culprit for my um, like vagina pain and my uterus pain and my ovary pain and my ovarian cyst and my peeing issues. Back to my POTS diagnosis story. So for the next couple months, I had gone to the ER a couple times for shortness of breath. Finally, around a month ago, I started having frequent heart palpitations again. They kind of died down in the winter when it got cold, which now I can recognize that it's because I wasn't reacting to the heat. My body wasn't having to tolerate the heat and not being able to regulate itself. So my, my palpitations kind of died down. My dizzy spells kind of died down. My shortness of breath kind of died down. I would get them infrequently, but about like a month, a month and a half ago-ish, it started getting really hot here again, which is when my symptoms started really returning again. And when they started returning, I was like, this is like annoying. Like, let me do some Google work. By the way, I'm the queen of being a Google doctor. So I'm Googling to see if there's any new studies coming out. Heart palpitations and long-term COVID, shortness of breath and long-term COVID. And I'm starting to see these articles and these studies about POTS and how people with long-term COVID are now getting diagnosed with POTS. So I do more research into POTS, find out that it's common in people who have viral infections. It, it, POTS is caused by something. And for me, it would be COVID, obviously. So I learned what POTS is. I learned the diagnostic criteria. I get my little finger monitor thing. I realized that my heart rate does increase from laying down to standing up by 30 beats per minute or higher than that sometimes. Um, and I start to realize a lot of my symptoms do correlate with switching positions. Not always, sometimes I'll literally be laying in bed trying to fall asleep and my heart will just start like pounding like a fucking like drum against my chest. But yeah, I noticed with position changes, my symptoms do kind of act up. Got a referral for a POT specialist, finally diagnosed with POTS. So yeah, I guess this is just a PSA. One, to people who are also young, who were told they would recover just fine from COVID, but are now having long-term symptoms, you're definitely not alone. If you haven't been diagnosed with anything, look into POTS because it could be that. Long story short, I shouldn't have gotten COVID. I wouldn't have gotten COVID if I didn't live in a giant fucking high rise with a bunch of bratty Greek life kids who can't just not party because they have no other personality besides partying during a pandemic, I guess. I know, like, I know for a fact I got COVID from my apartment building because a couple months later, I talked to other people in my building and I talked to the girls that live next door to me. I talked to girls that lived across the hall from me and I talked to people at the front desk and all of them got COVID in September. So I know for a fact I got COVID from my apartment building. This same apartment building would give out free food frequently in the lobby. They would send, it's a 14 story building. They would send a mass text to everyone in the building to summon everyone into the lobby to get their free food. And they would hand free food out to people without masks. 
even though they had a mask policy. Instead of saying, go get a mask and then come back and get your free food, they would, they would reward people for coming down without a mask. And then they would post on their Instagram story, people not wearing masks, getting their food. And it was just, it was like tone deaf to me because everyone in the building got COVID in September. And it's like, we get it. You don't care about the mask situation, but some of our like lives and health is like completely ruined. I can't work. I can't go back to in-person classes. It was just tone deaf and tasteless. And yeah, I'm a bitter bitch about it, but I think I have a right to be bitter about it. So yeah, I'm seeing a pot specialist now. Hopefully, I can get rid of it. For some people, pots last forever. I've seen people say with like viral pots, it usually subsides after a while. So hopefully it subsides because I really don't want to have to move from Arizona. And I really don't like being homebound and not able to even do something like grocery shopping or getting my mail. I have to ask the front desk to bring me my packages to my door because I can't go to the package locker sometimes because I get dizzy. That's so embarrassing. So yeah, that was the video. Feel free to share your experience with long-term COVID or any like POTS anecdotes, how long it took you to get diagnosed with POTS. And yep, that's it. Thanks for watching.